We mentioned before about the drift velocity being the average velocity with which the electrons drift when there's an electric field applied to a conductor. Let's take the journey of one charged particle as it travels across the conductor under an electric field. Remember that although these electrons drift in one particular direction, they also constantly collide with all the other atoms in the conductor material. Immediately after colliding with any particle in the conductor, let's call this time T1, the movement of the electrons will be completely random. Hence, the average velocity of all the electrons at this collision instant will be zero, as movement of electrons in one direction is cancelled by the movement in the opposite direction. After this collision, the electrons once again accelerate under the influence of the electric field until they have another collision at time T2. The average time taken between these two collisions for all the electrons in the conductor is called the relaxation time and is represented by tau. So let's put this drift velocity in a proper equation so we understand its relationship with the other factors. And what we're going to do is start with this basic Newton's law. V is equal to U plus AT. Here V is the velocity at time T. U is the initial velocity. and A is the acceleration. As we just saw, when an electron collides with an atom, let's say collision 1, the net velocity of all these electrons is equal to 0. These electrons then accelerate for a time tau until collision 2 happens when the net velocity is again equal to 0. So the drift velocity occurs only between two successive atomic collisions. That is between collision 1 and 2, collision 2 and 3, and so on for a time tau. So if I represent my drift velocity using this V is equal to U plus AT relation, the drift will be the initial velocity, which is the velocity during collision 1 equals to 0, plus acceleration into the time taken between the two collisions, which is tau. So my VD is equal to A times tau. We have all the other elements in place, but we still don't know what this acceleration term is. So let's try and express it using terms we already know. What I'm going to do here is to start with this F is equal to MA, standard force mass acceleration relationship. Then my A or acceleration will be the force on the electron divided by its mass. We don't know what the force on the electron is, so we'll just have to equate it with other things we know. But we already know what the mass of an electron is. We'll just keep it as m for now. So the question is, how can I find my electron force? How can I equate it with things we already know? A small hint. We know what the electric field is, capital E. Can we somehow use that somewhere? Remember the definition of an electric field? It's the force on a unit charge.
So if I know what the force in a unit charge is, wouldn't I be able to calculate the force in an electron, which essentially is also a charge? Uh huh. So the force in an electron will be the force in a unit charge into the charge of an electron. The charge of an electron is something we already know. It's minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. So we'll just represent it using minus E. So my force on an electron now becomes force on a unit charge, which is capital E, into the electron charge, which is small minus E. Then my electron acceleration will be F over M, F is minus small e into capital E. So this becomes minus small e into capital E divided by M. So if I use this value of acceleration we just derived in my VD is equal to A tau relation, it becomes something like this. So now I know the relationship between the drift velocity, the electric field, and the relaxation time. But we still don't know how our drift velocity is related to the current. Now that would be an extremely useful relationship to have as we would know how the change in the drift velocity alters the current flow. So let's try and find that out. <laughs> 